Hey everyone, and welcome to this video on Emmet. Now, Emmet is a very popular plugin for code and text editors that's been around for a while. It is, in essence, an abbreviation syntax for HTML and CSS. Well, what does that mean? So, with very few characters and few abbreviations, you're able to spin up HTML and CSS really quickly. And for any front-end dev, web dev, or someone learning about the internet and making websites, it is an essential tool in their tool belt. You are taking on something that will almost double your workflow. So in this video, we'll have a look at what Emmet is, what kind of superpowers it can give you, and why you should, without a doubt, have it in your workflow. So let's go take a look. So as you can see here, we're using Visual Studio Code. Now just as a note, Visual Studio Code comes with Emmet by default. It's one of the benefits of using VS Code. If you're using a text editor or code editor like Atom or Sublime, you will need to download Emmet from emmet.io and install it manually. So let's jump into Emmet and have a look at some of the superpowers it can give us. And where better to start than by looking at creating a HTML website itself and the basic structure of a website. Now the skeletal structure of a HTML website, you would argue, is a doc type. You want to start with that and you want to declare it as a HTML. And that's fine, nothing's changed. Emmet hasn't brought anything new there just yet. But if we were to decide, let's create the HTML tag itself, this is where Emmet starts to come in. Now normally you would do the less than sign and you would type in HTML and you would close it and then you would have to type in the end tag as well. Now Visual Studio Code uh, auto completes it for me, but there are other benefits. You can, in Emmet, simply type HTML and press tab and it will auto complete HTML for you. But it also places the cursor perfectly within the tags so that you can carry on and keep coding. So let's create the head in the same way. Type head, press tab, type body, press tab, and we'll put hello world. And we'll wrap that in a P tag as well. Now, right there, you've got the structure of your HTML website, and that was created fairly quickly, arguably a lot quicker than you would doing it natively. But there is an even quicker way. So in Emmet, you can simply create a HTML website by just trying to set the doc type. So you put an exclamation mark and you press tab. And there you go, you get the entire website. It's great for testing, great for side projects. Um, it's even great for work really if you're creating a HTML structure from scratch. It just gives you a lot more power and strength. And already you start to get an insight into how quick you potentially could be using Emmet. And we've only looked at just a few elements here. So again, like above, creating single elements is super simple. Like for example, you want to create a div, if you want to create a span, or if you want to create a h1, very simple. Now where we go off and we start to do some more interesting things is for example, if we want to add some text to an element. Let's take a button element, for example. So if we were to create a button element, and we want to say, uh, have it say submit in the center. You simply do that and press tab. And then we've got submit in the center. And you can do this with anything. Oops. And it works perfectly. Another fantastic feature of Emmet is that it has a lorem ipsum generator. Now lorem ipsum is traditionally used as dummy text for designs and for development work. So if you need some text just as a placeholder, just to show the shape of a layout, just to show what it would look like with text and to show some of the styling, lorem ipsum is perfect for that. And as a developer with Emmet, you will have that superpower very quickly to add dummy text rather than having to go to a website and use a generator. All you simply do is type in lorem and it generates it for you. And you can even type it within a HTML element. So for example, if we were to create a P tag and then we type in lorem and we press tab and you get the same exact lorem ipsum there. 
So it's all well and good wanting to create HTML elements, but realistically, you want to add attributes, you want to add class names, and you want to add IDs and things like that. So if we were to create a div here and we want to say, give it a class name of test, and we press tab, we can immediately see that with the same benefits that we got with creating the element, we also are able to add attributes like class to HTML and carry on working. And if we go here and we decide, you know what, well, we actually need to add an ID. So then we can say, let's add an ID of test. And immediately you can see it's the exact same thing. It's a fantastically speedy way of building HTML very quickly. And in actuality, you could just sit there and just completely build out very quickly the entire HTML structure before you even start a website with Emmet because it just gives you that speed. And you, you do it so quickly, you're able to iterate. Now, you can add other attributes. So for example, if we were to say, let's add a script, and then we're going to add the source as well. All you need to do is type in the element and add the colon and the name of the attribute. So let's decide we want to create an unordered list. You can do that as well, very simple. But what if we want to create some child elements? Now you could normally just go here and you could type in um, a list element and press tab, but there is a much, much quicker way. You can type unordered list and then you can do a list item and simply press tab. And doing so with the more than sign essentially nests this element. So if we do that again, we'll do that here and we'll add a class name this time. So if we do an ordered list and we do a child a selector and then we say list item and then we will add the class name of item and then we press tab you can see we can even affect the child elements as well now you don't always have to add when you're adding a class name the actual element that you want to do it's very implicit that you want to add a list item if you're going to do that so within an unordered list if you want to add a list item you can just simply say we'll add item again and it will create a list item for us. And you can do that for many things. Now here's where it really starts to take off. You can already start to see we're starting to produce like a collection of Emmet abbreviations and you're starting to produce formulas. In this one, we're going to use multiplication and we're going to multiply the amount of child elements that we want. So if we say we want a child element of item as a class name for a list item for an unordered list, and we want five of those, let's say, and we press tab, you can see that we have created five list items for an unordered list. Okay, it's all well and good having class names for each individual one, and you might want them all to have the same class name because you want them all to have matching styling. That's great. But what if you want them all to have a slightly different styling? Well, the way you do that is you can add a unordered list, list item, we can add the item again. But if we add the dollar sign to say that we want this to be a variant of the one before it by one, and it will just one up that, let's say by a number. So if we say, let's do five of these, you can see each one now has a slight variation of one. And it's a fantastic tool you can use to basically create individual class names and you can do that for attributes and so on and so forth. Now we've had a look at multiplication, but you can also add class names together. Now we've had a look at multiplication, but you can also add elements together. So if we were to go here and we were to say a list, and then we'll add a list of this item of item, and we will then within that create a span and we will say that can have a class list of micro and then within that we will add a p tag and we'll add paragraph as the text and we'll times that by 10 and you can see that within that structure within that formula we have created a big set of markup exactly how we wanted and what we needed for example if we wanted to do a slight variation to that but let's say for example we want to group elements together so we've created one huge structure from start to finish with a wrapping element, and it's all contained within here. 
But let's say we want to create two elements and within them you can have whatever you want. So now if we want to group two sets of HTML elements together and also produce it within the same formula, so very simply we use parentheses like this and we'd, let's say let's create a section, we'll have a div, we'll have a paragraph text within that, we'll have let's say five of those and outside of that what we'll do is we'll create a footer with a paragraph text and we will have a copyright bit of text within there and if we press tab immediately you can see that we've created a section with its own grouping and its own HTML elements and we've created a footer with its own elements and its own content and it's a fantastic way of producing content really fast and very detailed so one of the last things we're going to look at is input elements now input elements are fantastically diverse there is a huge range of input elements you could have color pickers name inputs you could have email inputs you could have text inputs all with their own validation all with their own base styling and features and logic it's fantastic so if we were to put in here input color and press tab you get all the benefits of Emmet and more it's created three attributes for you it's filled in one as color and all we've simply done is type input color and that's it and it's produced the above and obviously you've got your old favorites you've got text which is implicit you don't need to put that you could just put input and it will do that for you but let's say for example if you want a number or if you wanted email it's all there for you so that's a general idea of what Emmet is how it can make your HTML workflow absolutely rapid. I would highly recommend to just open up a HTML file once you've got Emmet and just have a play around. So one of the lesser known features of Emmet is its CSS abbreviations. So if, for example, we wanted to create a margin of 10 pixels, we would normally just create it like that. We'd type out the whole thing, add 10 pixels. In Emmet, all you need to do is you need to press M and then you can set the margin very quickly and just press tab and you get to this stage here where you can start creating um, CSS. But there is an even quicker way. If you were to type M and then put the value in, you also are able to set the margin of your CSS line a lot quicker. So if you can imagine, it will over time speed up your process and your flow. But where it does get better is, for example, if you want to add X and Y styling and uh, dimensions to your margin. So if you want to say, do this, you want to say 10 pixels by 20 pixels. So 10 pixels on the top and 20 pixels on the bottom. The best way to do this is by simply doing M10 to 20. And doing that very quickly spun up something that probably would have taken you twice as long. It is a great way of speeding up your workflow and something that I would highly recommend. So if, for example, we're using SAS or if we're using variables and CSS in general, there is a way to include that in your workflow too. So we wouldn't quite do it like this, like we did before, but let's say, for example, if we did have a variable for 10 pixels, we would put that here. And then if we did have a variable for 20 pixels, we'd also put that there. Now the major difference is, if you remember, we put we made it as a range when we did 10 to 20. We get rid of that here. And all we need to do is just add the second variable, press tab, and you can see it has created our margin and our CSS with the variables perfectly as we would see in SAS. Now you can also do things like add colors very quickly. Um, we'll just hide this for now as it isn't CSS. We'll say let's add a background color of black, let's say. So we'll add zero here and you can add hex colors and simply tab and it will add the entirety of the hex color. Now obviously you'd probably argue, oh yeah, uh, adding black with uh, the hex code of lots of zeros is super easy. That's nothing useful. I wouldn't probably type in all of that anyway. Well, we can do something like this, for example, with slightly different hex codes. And you can repeat yourself. 
it's not entirely useful but you can explore that you can improve on that if there are certain colors that you enjoy but it is still an abbreviation and a shortcut you can also do things like add a font weight so if we decided we want to add a font weight of 400 now let's say for example we wanted to make sure that this font weight was important for whatever reason let's say we're overriding javascript or a css module we can simply go let's add a font weight of 600 and add the important uh, tag so we can go like that and then we've added the important modifier. Now, similar to HTML limit, you can also do groupings. You can, for example, say, I want this to have a padding of 10 to 20 pixels. We want to make sure that's important. And then we also want to add a margin of 20 pixels. And you can see very quickly, we've just added two bits of styling far quicker than we would have been able to add by manually typing that all out. So I would highly recommend introducing Emmet into your CSS workflow as well. And you can immediately see some of the benefits that will make you a much faster front-end developer or a much faster designer and just level up your HTML and CSS game all together. So aside from HTML and CSS abbreviations, Emmet also comes with a host of actions. And some of these can be used, for example, to copy a line. So you could copy a line like that and make as many copies as you want. You can shift it around. So if I wanted to shift this one line and bring it all the way down here and traverse it through the document, I can do. I can also, for example, if I wanted to, just comment all that out with command forward slash. There's a whole list of actions that uh, Emmet gives you. And I would highly recommend exploring the whole list to do so. What you need to do is go to docs.emmet.io here and take a look at the action section. And if, for example, we want to just toggle comments, which we've already shown, we just press command forward slash. If you want to, for example, split or join a tag, so something like that, you could split it. So something like if you want to remove a tag, the whole list is here. There's a whole fantastic uh, group of actions that I would have a look at and explore and make sure that you do include those in your workflow. Uh, one of the most useful ones are toggle comment, uh, split join tag and uh, merge lines where essentially you can uh, bring everything onto one line if need be. So another really cool one is in CSS, you can reflect all the vendor prefixed variations for Firefox, for WebKit, for uh, Internet Explorer, Opera, etc., with a command B. So I hope that's been useful and that you've gained something from that. Make sure to introduce this into your workflow and rapidly increase your HTML and CSS game. Thank you for watching. I've been Harry and this has been Curious Byte.